network. Oops. One sec. There you go. The Blint Network. My name is Faris Sheik, so we'll be looking at my SYP today, but if you look at it technically, it, there are three different projects. There's the research end, the actual project end, and a business end of the project. So there's three mini projects inside my overall SYP. So what is my SYP? I'm developing a web and mobile application to facilitate people wherever they are and strengthen communities. Using my application, communities will be able to uh, overall become a lot more efficient and it will create high impact real world results. So let's go into the first end of this, the research end of my project. So what have I done? From weeks one through four, I've gathered resources, started researching, got these artifacts, so I got books, materials, and started researching about uh, different sort of um, things I can use for like my, uh, you know, uh, researching end of the project. So instead of developing, I, I got some coding books, I got some uh, concepts behind the coding of the application, and I try to figure out what suits me the best. So, you know, like I said, there are so many different topics I can choose to research for my building a web application. There's programming, managing applications, websites, uh, you know, researching social media, markets, commerce, communities, neighborhoods. There are like a whole abundance of topics I can research to learn about this application and building an application. So, what did I choose to research? I chose to research neighborhoods and communities. Why did I choose this? I chose the concept behind my application. Instead of researching how to code, how to become a developer, I wanted to know the main focus and reason behind my application, which is to strengthen communities. This way, I can understand the, the goal of my application and what I'm trying to create in the real world. So, uh, you know, after, you know, from weeks one to five, I started gathering these resources, I started studying them, and I figured out that my paper is going to be an analysis and an examination. So, let's look into my, my outline topics. Uh, the first topic is the theory of social capital. I go into the research paper, I talk about what is social capital, how it's useful, and that it's declining. So, just a brief overview of what social capital is. We have three types of capital. First capital, it is physical capital, assets in our real world. Second type of capital is human capital, it's knowledge. And we use this knowledge to, you know, become smart, like we're smart, and then we use it to apply in real world situations and make money. Third capital is social capital. This, these are like the connections, the physical like, and human connections we have with different people to like, let's say, get a better, better job or, you know, find a different job somewhere else. So we use social capital to uh, generate wealth in our life too. Then I decided to study the history of neighborhoods. Uh, I studied political participation, political participation and civic participation and religious participation. Uh, by studying this, I figured out what's been happening in the past 40 years and uh, how you know, political things have been going on in our towns and our neighborhoods, how uh, we've been civically interacting with people in neighborhoods and how religiously involved we are. Then I researched past communities, third places, and organizations. So we looked into like social capital, then we looked into uh, religious and political participation. Looking into past communities and, and our real world communities, I wanted to know how we can strengthen them. So besides just the neighborhood, where else do we go to? How do we like, build communities? We have third places. The third place is basically, to give you an overview, we have three places. The first place is our home. This is where we like, live, this is where we go to sleep where we meet our family. The second place is the workplace or a school, depending on how old we are. Third place is a place where we gather to meet different people, to meet our friends, to go to a coffee shop, to go bowling, and that's the concept. So the third place is where communities can really form and strengthen. So after that, I looked into online communities. So we have all the real world communities. How can we create online communities? So I studied the definition and rules of an online community. What makes up one? What, do, what are scholars, what are professionals saying about online communities? What are the rules of online communities? Then I looked into some companies, real world examples of online communities. Craigslist and Facebook. I examined and studied uh, what people are saying about these you know, companies and if they are communities. And if so, what aspects of them make them communities? Then I looked into Craigslist, focused on it more, and uh, 
you know, looked into the history of Craigslist, how it was found by Craig Newmark, uh, how it is a community, and how we can use Craigslist to restore social capital. So it all ties up back to the original theory of social capital and how social capital is really important and necessary in our lives. Altogether, I got you know my secondary research. Then I got primary research. So I actually went out on the streets, went up to my neighbors, shook their hands, and interviewed them, surveyed them on my iPad, and asked them about their current lives, how they interact with people in their neighborhood, you know, how often they talk to them, how often they use their social media accounts. And I used all this data, gathered it together, and made graphs to uh, you know affirm the research that I did by reading books. So I confirmed that like hey, like, people actually don't talk that much to their neighbors. And, you know, Robert Putnam said it in Bowling Alone in the secondary research, but I also confirmed that by talking to the neighbors on my street. So in total, I also went out, um, I went to school, I went online, and I emailed people my survey. So in total, I got like 87 responses, and I used this data to uh, completely create my primary research. So the overall paper, the big three, what I have is the topic. The topic is the American neighborhood and restoring the community. Uh, research question is what has happened to communities in the past and how do you resolve it? And the thesis is the American neighborhood uh, has had you know, a steady decline in community involvement and that we can restore it uh, by using different tactics of third places and online communities. So overall, you know, study social capital, study neighborhoods, and then I try to figure out you know, we have this problem, but how can we fix it? And I really tied that up at the end of the research paper. So uh, those are my overall research topics. And that is the research piece of my SYP. Now we can go into the field work. It is the project itself. So what exactly am I doing? You know, it's the blimp network. What is that, though? Basically, the Blimp Network is a web and mobile application to facilitate you with people next to you, connect with them, ask, offer, buy and sell with people around you. We ultimately create a social marketplace for your street. So like I said, there's been this you know, decline in community interaction. We can solve this using Blimp Network and my mobile application. So uh, I started this project actually in August 2011. I was, uh, you know, visiting family in Karachi, Pakistan, and now, uh, you know, I was like, I couldn't go outside that much. So, I was bored at home, and you know, I decided, hey, I want to like go online code or something because I had this idea. I was inspired by my uncle a year and a half ago about this application and you know, about the idea of what's going on next to me. So, I was on the computer, started coding right away, and before I knew it, it became a little mini project. Then I heard about SYP, and I used uh, SYP to, you know, furthermore spend time on this project and start coding. So uh, I used my knowledge of you know, Google Maps, MySQL databases, and a, another network I created three years ago, two years ago, and I integrated all these things together to really start up my project. Now the project itself, the application, there are four main features. There is the navigation system, the creating content, user interaction, and managing account. So navigation system, it's very basic, you use it Google Maps. So you open up the app and you're able to browse around you in your location and click on markers. Then there's creating content. So you go in the app, you can create content, you can ask for something, you can sell something. So it's combining different features of eBay, Craigslist, all into one thing. Uh, then there's user interaction. So you'll be able to communicate with people on the network. You'll be, you'll be able to email them, chat with them, etc. After that, managing accounts. So editing your passwords and you know, editing your listings, etc. So all these four features tie together to create the overall application and their core functions. So how did I do all this? You know, it's a lot of uh, coding and I didn't research this coding. I have a lot of background experience in coding. Uh, in fourth grade, I started my first HTML website. By sixth grade, I started learning the, uh, the program called Flash. I started making animations and uh, using ActionScript to make Flash games. After that, by 8th grade, I learned a language called PHP, and this is a programming uh, language on the web, and I used this to create my first network called the Rahaba Universe. And so overall, I've had six to eight years of uh, coding experience and exposure to online web development. So I used all this background knowledge to uh, really create this application. So, I, like I said, I started this in August 2011. I did most of the work um, in the fall. After that, after SYP started you know, coming near, uh, what I did 
is I started transforming the project. You know, for an example, back in the old days, Google, if you typed in a search, it would refresh the whole page to go to your search, right? Now what happens? You type in a word, it automatically starts listing the, the, the searches underneath, right? Basically, this is called dynamic content. And creating dynamic content requires different type of code. So what I did is I transformed my application. Instead of refreshing all the time, refreshing every time there's a new blimp, a new posting, or you create something, um, it happens dynamically and changes right there and then. So uh, what I did was, in the past couple of months, I transformed this completely and used Ajax language to make this dynamic content so you don't have to refresh all the time. So like, like I said, term four, uh, so term three I was working on changing the dynamic content. Term four, I started redefining the communication system and uh, changing that to dynamic too, so the chat didn't have to refresh all the time. Uh, so I did that well, the weeks one and two, and I spent over 40 hours of coding those first two weeks. It was really uh, long and tedious, but I did that. And then uh, after week three, uh, so plans changed, and I stopped coding because I realized this is way too much work for me. Those four main functions in my app are big functions, and it takes usually teams to work on these projects. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to change this up and uh, start a business. So that was the project end of my uh, SYP. Let's go into the third piece, the business. All right, so luckily I was introduced to a program called Mass Challenge by Mr. Kenosi, and it's a great uh, startup accelerator program for entrepreneurs to create up create their uh, businesses. And uh, I applied there, unfortunately I did not make it through, but by applying there I really got, was introduced to these different type of questions that made you think in a business sense, the problem, the solution, your business model, uh, your marketing, etc. So I actually got some mentors and I worked on the app and I you know, started getting into, into this like business you know, work. So I learned like, hey, what is the problem? What am I trying to solve? Uh, how am I going to solve it? Well, how am I going to make revenue? How am I going to generate revenue? Like, how am I going to profit off this application? Why will investors come to me? So it got me thinking about business. Um, although I did not make it through uh, to round two on Mass Challenge, it didn't stop me. Just recently, I decided to sign up for two different competitions. There's the Boston Innovation Challenge at Harvard Innovation Labs and the Sandbox Idea Launch. So BIC, Boston Innovation Challenge, is hosted by Harvard Innovation Labs and basically what they do is on May 5th they had a hackathon weekend where people would go there meet other people and form a team and start working on an app uh, typically a mobile app so unfortunately I wasn't there to do the hackathon weekend but Mass Challenge told me about this competition and I entered late and had my presentation yesterday night uh, at Harvard Innovation Labs and I presented there it was great um, there were only three winners but uh, then again, what turns out the rules were you couldn't uh, work on your app before the two weeks. It had to be done in the past two weeks. So that was the one, one of the disqualifications that didn't uh, make me go to the next round. But uh, I have another competition called Sandbox Idea Launch. It's a day uh, you go to. Um, you have a bunch of judges. You pitch your idea. You have some investors there. And uh, they award a couple prizes to the, you know, the best pitches. So, uh, those are the competitions I've entered, but as of now I have big news, uh, new news for like what I'm doing in my business. We are now officially a registered company. As of May 3rd, we are a legal corporation, we have filled out the paperwork, and we're now Blimp Network, Inc. So, what does this mean? Legal corporation, uh, Blimp Network, Inc. Um, we have a board of directors. I'm the president and founder. Uh, my, one of my mentors for Mass Challenge became my investor. And uh, he's, the, uh, yeah, he's the financial guy. And now we also have a common stock uh, distribution. So we distributed how, much, how many shares each person is going to get. So what's happening exactly now, now that we're a company? Uh, like I said, we have an investor, an angel investor. So he helped me start up the uh, entire company. And thanks to him, we can now uh, have a stronger development team. And we actually have a real development team now. We have five workers for us. They're outsourced right now. 
and uh, they're working on the project. We're completely changing the entire project in a different code. We're using Java now. We're doing a J2EE application. So we're transforming my, you know, uh, like a little hobby PHP project into something professional that's going to be used in the real world like really powerfully and using Java. So uh, this development team is working on it uh, for the next two months and we're going to release our prototype uh, by the end of June. So uh, my business field work to sum it all up past four weeks um, I've been writing documents explaining the project to, to my workers I've been talking about the features uh, what needs to be done on the features and then uh, I've been having daily, daily meetings with the investor and my workers checking in on them how the application is going, how the work is going and what needs to be fixed. So the, that is the business piece of this uh, and that is the big news for my business. Now you can uh, check out my business pitch that I applied for at Mass Challenge. In the past few decades, with the rise of technology, we have started to lose a valuable relationship with our neighborhoods and community. We have become so preoccupied with our friends and colleagues on our social networks that we don't even care about the people who live next to us. Communication with neighbors and people in our community has decreased significantly. Nowadays, we have multiple ways to be connected with our friends, family, and coworkers. There are websites like Facebook and Twitter that make our social connections with friends stronger. Then, we have services like Craigslist and eBay that let us share and exchange goods with people that we may not know. However, people want to do these activities locally, near their exact location, for convenience and sake of time. There is no way for you to view what's going on in your exact location, whether you're at home, in your neighborhood, or in the city. How come there are no websites that allow us to connect with our community? Why can't we use technology to interact with the people living next to us? And that's why I introduce to you the Blurf Network. It is time people should be able to connect with their direct neighbors, know what's going on in their location, and do business with them. People have many useful reasons to communicate with their neighbors, from offering services like lawn mowing, to selling goods like DVDs, to making announcements about local events. There is so much going on in our neighborhood. The Blimp Network is based around the idea of launching Blimps. Blimps are sent by companies to advertise something that everyone around you can see. Our goal is to bring that to communities and create something that all of your neighbors can see. What is happening in your exact location with the people next to you? Share information, create offers, make requests, and announce things to the people right next to you. Whatever you want, need, or want to say, all you have to do is Blimp it. Welcome to the Blimp Network. So that is my pitch for Mass Challenge that I uh, applied for. And it's on YouTube, so I've been promoting this video too for people who are interested in my project and what it does. All right, so that is my presentation. Thank you for your time. Uh, don't forget to visit my wiki if you're interested furthermore in my project at www.blimpnetwork.info. Any questions, comments? Hi, I'm Karen Focus. Uh, sorry, I came in a little bit late. Sorry. Right. Uh, and forgive me if I'm asking you to repeat yourself. Uh, what similar projects are you aware of that are currently operating Boston? Similar projects to mine, like uh, in the Boston area, I don't. There is one. It's called Commonplace. It's a Harvard Innovations uh, startup, but that is a. It's a business. Like it's a company now, uh, but it's focused more on like just the neighborhood interactions with people. So it's like a Facebook for your neighborhood rather than a commerce-based application. So mine's really focused on commerce. Uh, besides that, Commonplace. There's not many other startups. Uh, that are related to mine. There are a few competitors in our field. We have one, a couple in California, and we have a few mobile applications. But um, as for my idea in itself, I don't think anyone is really close to that yet. Yep. Any other questions? So could I download this app right now? As far as how does that work? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, not yet, actually, because I developed it on uh, as a web application a couple months ago. But uh, we want to move into the iPhone and Android uh, marketplaces, but we we don't have that ready yet. So we're redesigning the web application completely in Java. So um, it's going to be a new prototype is going to be released in a month. After that, we're going to outsource more workers and um, make an iPhone app. So by then, like I'd say a couple months from now, then you can download it on the App Store. So this might be a silly question, but what's the difference between an app and a website? Oh, app and website, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, basically, the website, it's a web application. So let's say you go on Facebook, you log in, it talks to a server. So that's an application right away. It talks to the server and you're interacting with you know, different computers around the world. So that's a web application. Uh, an iPhone app is just the same thing, except it's built in an iPhone's native language. So web applications are built in web languages. iPhone applications are built in iPhone language. That's it. Any other questions? Gandhi? So is it kind of a, I'm just trying to get a sense of what that app would kind of look like. I mean, could you speak to that at all? I kind of am picturing no, sure, a, no problem. kind of a composite between like, you know, Facebook, eBay, uh -huh. but, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Here we go. So, this is what I created um, a couple months ago. So, this is the Blunt Network site. It's, I don't know why it's doing that, but it's very, uh, it's a prototype. Um, and I threw together the design in like a couple days. Uh, right now, so it's asking me, asking me for the location, right? My physical location. So I allow it to do that, and um, let's see, it loads the Google Maps. So right now, it figured out we're in Newton. Uh, it found Newton North's location, and on the left, you can see a bunch of listings right here. So green means offer, yellow means request. Um, now this is, then again, this is a very basic design. So we're redesigning and redeveloping the entire app to uh, look more professional. Um, but on the right, you can see here is the map. So this map, you can drag around, you can zoom in, and uh, there are different markers for different type of listings. So like right here, there's a profile, uh, and it, you know that's a simple profile like link. You can zoom out and find other like actual listings like right here. Uh, this person's a photographer; uh, they're selling their photography services. Um, if you look here. This person uh, does screen printing, so they'll you know make some like T-shirts or any uh, anything you're looking for. So, and besides that, there's also requests. <coughs> Somebody wants a 35 millimeter film camera, so if you have that, you can contact them. Um, it, we're logged in as a guest right now, so you don't see the start chat button. But if you sign up an account uh, as a beta user, you log in, and it'll have an option to start a chat. Yeah, and then the chat will load on the right-hand side of the page, and you could uh, communicate with that user. And then you're kind of keeping the same notion that you'll have, like, you, know, you have users, and then you have people looking for stuff, and people kind of offering stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And kind of the map interface. Yeah, the map is the, is the main interface, because the concept of the app overall is what's going on near me. So I'm at my house, I'm at my friend's house, family's house, I'm in the workplace, I'm in the city, and I'm like, what's happening near me right now? So I take, whip out my iPhone and then open up the application and I see a map of my exact location with all these different blimp markers around there. And by doing that, I can see literally what people are doing next to me, like what services they can offer, if someone's a babysitter, if someone's a, an auto duty, can fix my car, um, or they're having a yard sale tomorrow. So there's so many different uses for this application because we can connect with the people around us. Non-techie person myself, I'm blown away by mm -hmm. this work that you've done. It's really incredible. Thank you. Um, you might have said this already, but when you interview people, mm -hmm. 75-85 people, were you asking them would they use this? Oh, uh, that is the second piece of my survey I'm going to do. Uh, as for the research paper, like that I made, the 22-page research paper, I only interviewed them about their ideas of communities and neighborhoods, what they think about okay. communities, uh, rather than the application, because there's like the research end of it, then there's the project end. But as for like you know, now that I started a company, I do want to research people and ask them like, hey, uh, how often do you think you would use something like this? Would it be useful for you? Would you even like sign up for an account? 
Um, so I'm going to use that data to actually like accelerate my business forward and see how to market it properly. Yeah. yeah. Great. And it sounds like it, it's self-sustaining. Once once it gets set up in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, people can manage it. Uh, like a Craigslist type of thing. In a way, you can. That's what really an online community is. But unfortunately, uh, running a business and using this application, you know, in multiple cities and hopefully nationwide one day. Uh, you can't really do that. You'll have to have a lot of people monitoring content because there's a lot of user-generated content, so there can be inappropriate stuff. You have to really manage it, filter it. You have to have a, a technical team to support it, uh, support servers, and you have to constantly uh, fix bugs and update the application to facilitate needs of users. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? How will I make money? It's a great question. I usually talk to investors about that. But um, basically, for the first year, we're going to approach a freemium mo model uh, used by Facebook, you know, how they started up in Harvard. And they didn't decide to ruin the party of Facebook by putting ads there. So after a year, we will consider uh, putting ads around the application. But uh, besides that, we can, in the first couple months after we launch the app, once we have a solid user base growing, we're going to contact lo local businesses uh, talk to them and be like, hey, you can sign up for the Blimp Network. We'll give you a free trial. If you like it, uh, you can continue using it and create your Blimps and advertise deals, daily deals. So it'll be in real time. So you, someone's, let's say I'm over here, open up the app and I see, whoa, uh, West Union Pizza over there, they're having a, a deal for like a pizza slice and a Coke for a buck fifty. And this will bring customers for them and for me they'll be paying a subscription fee every month so that's a you know it's a business plan that we're thinking of and I'm highly thinking of using subscription packages for all sorts of local businesses because they will really benefit from this yeah yep anything else alrighty well thank you for your time <laughs>